Hello, I'm Iran Solomon, and I wanted to ask you, have you ever thought about what's it all about? What all this is? Jewish thought has very specific answers, and they're all in the Torah, in our Jewish lore, in its deepest part, which is called the Sod, the secrets of the Torah, or the Kabbalah. Now, Kabbalah in Hebrew means receiving. And the reason is because this wisdom was transmitted from generation to generation, from teacher to pupil, mainly orally. And learning it was more through receiving from a teacher than from reading books. But I believe it's also because the Kabbalah teaches us indeed how to receive all the good, all the plenty, that Hashem, the creator of the world, wants to give us in a correct way. And this brings us again to the question of what's it all about? Why was the world created? What was the purpose? Is there a purpose? And we believe that there is. We believe that Hashem exists. It is probable that we exist too. But what's certain is that He exists and he is good and the way of the good is to wish to bestow good upon others and as this world was created it means that before the creation of the world it was just only Hashem the Almighty alone so in order to have somebody to bestow his good upon he has created the world in order to bestow his good upon its creatures upon this creation he has created but now we come to some difficulties because if Hashem is good and he wants to give his good why didn't he just create a world which is good and given his good to that world why was it necessary to have evil in it if he is good why everything is so bad why are there bad things in the world Indeed, in the second chapter of the Torah story about the creation, chapter 2 of Genesis, it is a great wonder why this very perfect place called the Garden of Eden had to have this serpent crawling inside it, always there to tempt Adam and Eve and even succeed in his temptation. Why was all this necessary? In order to understand this, I want to tell you a story. It's a parable, actually. And if you think of it, it's very, very deep. And it's about a pauper, a poor man, who knocks upon the door of a wealthy man. The wealthy man opens the door, and this poor man begs for money. So, the wealthy man, who is good, puts his hand in his pocket, and, and brings out a $100 bill and gives it to this pauper. Now let's think. Is this pauper now happy? Why, of course he's happy. At last he has some money to feed his family, his wife and kids. But something is wrong there. There's one thing that this pauper cannot do, and that's looking the wealthy man in the eyes, gazing upon his face, because he is ashamed. In Judaism, we call this a bread of shame, a bread which is a bread which is good, but has something bitter in it, and that's shame. Now I'll, I'll tell you another version of the same story. The pauper comes to the door of the wealthy man. He knocks upon it. The wealthy man opens the door, and then the poor man begs. But now the wealthy man says, I will give you this $100, but first I want you to clean my house. The poor man has no choice. He goes to clean the house. But when he receives this $100 bill as payment, now he is really happy. Now he can look the wealthy man in the eyes. Now he can gaze upon his face. Now Hashem is good and Hashem is perfect. 
So the good he wishes to give us has to be perfect as he is perfect. It must not have any blemish in it. It must not have anything which has to do with shame in it, because then the good will be not so good, not perfect. And especially as the good that Hashem wants to give the creation is his own self. Is It's the radiation of his face. There is nothing better to aspire to than to be in contact with Hashem and the illumination of his face. So here a bread of shame is really something which cannot be accepted because the good will be tainted. So in order to create the situation where we can accept his good, in which we can receive the good from Hashem as payment, as a fee for our work, and not as a free gift which has shame in it, Hashem has created a situation of work, of a job that we can do for Him. And the job that we are entitled to do for Hashem is called the mitzvot doing His will, executing His commandments. And when we do that, everything we shall receive will be really perfect, with no taint of shame in it. But still, why is there evil? Why is evil necessary in all that? In order to understand that, I invite you to stay with us in the next lessons of this guide to the depths of the Torah. So bye bye for now.